Hello viewers and fellow space travelers, this is Thorn of Night and I'm here to demonstrate a new contraption I have made to add to my list of overly complicated things uh, that is utilizing some of the mods in the Feed the Beast Direwolf 20 pack. First off, if you don't know who Direwolf 20 is, go check them out on YouTube and uh, watch his videos he's got a lot of really awesome stuff out there also the feed the beast mod pack look into it if you haven't already because it adds as of right now 63 different mods uh for the direwolf 20 pack anyway that just adds so much more content to the game that it almost feels like a whole other game uh but before I digress too much, what this thing does is it helps with the production of bees, honeycomb, and cross-pollinating of trees for the forestry pack, or for the forestry mod, rather. The forestry mod adds a whole bunch of stuff to the game, including some world gen stuff, uh, like some beehives, and, uh, and what you can get from it is different types of wood for building different things. Also, the bees from the bee part of it add uh, all kinds of different options for you to generate uh, materials and uh, extra uh, accessories that will help you in your gameplay. But you're going to first need to start with getting some bees. Now, in the world gen, beehives like these will spawn, here, let me change that, will spawn uh, all over the world, and you need to have a special tool in order to get the bees from them. Otherwise, if you just try to break them, they won't drop anything. What you need is something called a scoop. A scoop is made with some sticks and some wool, and you get one of these guys, and you attack it just like with any other kind of tool like this and out come ideally at least one or two bees this time i got a, a princess and a drone sometimes you get some honeycomb you're going to need to start getting a whole bunch of these uh in order to get uh, this contraption here to work now instead of trying to make this a a sort of mod spotlight uh, i'm just going to demonstrate what you need to get this going but it will require a crash course in some of the other uh, mod parts. So let me get to how to make the uh, uh, let me get rid of these. How to make the parts needed in order to create this thing. First off, you're going to need to make some apiaries. The apiaries are used in order to uh, get more bees and to produce the honeycomb for making different things, and uh, they are a pretty indispensable uh, once you get going. What you're going to need is some bronze. And bronze is made with some copper ingots and some tin ingots like this. And that'll get you four bronze. You take the bronze in this configuration, you'll get something called a sturdy casing. Sturdy casing is used with some tin and some glass in order to make something called a squeezer. The squeezer runs off of power. I just have a redstone energy cell back here to... Uh, demonstrate this but the squeezer is needed to make seed oil and the way that works is you take it, these seeds most kinds of seeds will work and it takes the seeds squeezes them into seed oil and the seed oil can be extracted using cans or capsules or uh, other containers like this you take the seed oil and you Put it in something called a carpenter. The carpenter is made with another sturdy casing, some more glass, and some bronze this time. That'll get you that. It also requires power. You take the seed oil and you put it in here with a pattern of logs, and it will get you something called an impregnated casing. Wait for this to finish here. 
and see how it uses those automatically with the seed oil to make these impregnated casings. The impregnated casings with some wood planks and some slabs will get you your apiary. That is the, uh, the, the way you need to get started and anything that will produce the MJ power can be used to power these guys here. But we're not even close to done yet. This is a very convoluted mechanism, but once it gets built, it's good to go forever. The next part of the uh, system uses stuff from the uh, blue electricity, which is added from a different mod. And in order to get started, you're going to need to fire up some clay into some bricks, make these brick blocks like this and use eight brick blocks to make an alloy furnace. This is going to be your best friend for blue electricity. The alloy furnace is used uh, in order to make, among other things, brass. It's the same thing as bronze, only uh, with the copper and tin in the alloy furnace, it makes brass, and it works off of putting coal or any solid fuel in here to generate the heat to smelt the different things together. The brass in this is used to make pneumatic tubes with some glass. And the pneumatic tubes need iron in order to make uh, something called a restriction tube. More on that in a minute. Back to the alloy furnace, you're going to need to get yourself some nickelite and some silver to make some blue alloy ingots. These are used for a lot of different things, including, along with some wool, some blue alloy wire. The next part you're going to need to make is a, a battery box, and that's one of the uh, ingredients for it is a BT battery, and that's used, or and that's made using some nickelite, some copper, and some tin, along with some iron, another blue alloy ingot, and some oak plank or some planks, in order to make your battery box. Go ahead and make it morning here again. The next part, you're going to need the alloy furnace again with eight coal and eight sand to make this thing called a silicon bool. And in order to cut the silicon bool, you're going to need to make yourself a diamond handsaw. This is made with some sticks, some iron ingots, and some diamonds. And this diamond handsaw is used to make the silicon wafer stuff. Uh, you get 16, uh, it's 16 of them from one silicon bool. And the wafers are used to make a few different things, including these blue doped wafers. You take one of these silicon wafers and four nickelite, and this can be any configuration you want, um, to make the blue doped wafer. And then eight of these blue doped wafers with some blue alloy ingot will get you a solar panel. Now, we're about half done here. It's pretty easy to get to a lot of these things. It's just not early game. I'd, I'd call this mid-game stuff. Basically, at the point where you're going to want to start doing the bee breeding and the tree breeding and that sort of thing, uh, you've already pretty much got yourself established in the game anyway. You've probably got all the supplies needed to make this. Um, so at the point when you're ready to pursue this, it's not going to be too hard, but don't imagine that you're going to be uh, going after this early game. Um, I mean, you could make it your goal, but it's 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 sort of a a secondary uh, part of a, of the mods. But anyway, f moving on to the next part, we're going to need to make some pistons, and that's just regular vanilla pistons, using wood planks, some cobblestone, iron ingots, and some redstone. Then, using the silicon wafer again, only this time, this time with some redstone, you'll make some red-doped wafers. These, the piston red-doped wafer, some cobblestone, and this time some gold ingots will get you these things called filters, and those are used for some other things, and I'll probably be covering all these in some of my future episodes. But for right now, we're only interested in this guy here, the retriever that uses these filters along with some uh, quite a few other things, some interpearls, leather, iron ingots, blue alloy ingots, and some more brass. 
and that'll get you these retrievers. You're going to need three of them for each of these uh, machines I'm making. Another important part of the blue electricity uh, uh, mod is something called red alloy. The red alloy is crafted two different ways, uh, but both require an alloy furnace. You need some redstone, four of them, and either a copper or an iron ingot. Then, once you have some of this, uh, you shape them like this. It only works vertically, and it will give you 12 red alloy wire. And this stuff is awesome because it can connect to the ceiling, to the walls, to the floor, wrap around corners, and it automatically detects things that it can power, so it'll, it'll attach to them automatically. Um, so this is uh, one of the things that you're going to probably be uh, using a lot of in the future anyway. But moving on, we're almost almost done here. You're going to need to get yourself some stone. And using some of that stone, you're going to need to make some stone wafers. These stone wafers are used towards making a lot of different uh, logic uh, circuits for redstone, including stone wire and with the help of some redstone torches for those who don't know it's redstone on a stick you'll be making stone cathodes also using these stone wafers some more stone wafers and some more redstone will get you stone anodes another one with some uh, with a redstone torch and some stone will get you a stone pointer and finally all these things together will get you a timer uh, which will help you immensely with some of your clock contraptions but for the purposes of this we're just going to use the timer as is and then finally you're going to need some panels now you can take your your diamond saw or make another saw uh, you take uh, a block for this I'm using cobblestone to make cobblestone slabs one block makes two of them and then Using the saw again on the slabs, I'm making cobblestone panels, and it has to be vertical. If it's horizontal, you get something else. And then these slab or these panels cut vertically again will get you covers. All right, now we've got everything that we need in order to actually make the uh, contraption. So let's go ahead and get all of this down out of here. And get the bees. All right. I have a nice open area here, so let me go ahead and get this set up. I'm going to use, I guess, four of them. So one, whoops, let me make this creative. One, two, three, four. And actually, I will make that a little bit longer. You're going to need to put some pneumatic pipes in the bottom along the side and then across the top then you're going to need to place your apiaries in I'll put a couple next to each other to show you that they can be near and also to demonstrate the pneumatic tubes I'll put one way over here and they automatically connect sometimes it takes a moment for it to update now we need a way to get stuff out of these apiaries so first off let's put some cover panels here some more pneumatic tubes here. Let's get this connected. And we're going to need a chest here. As well as there. This is a restriction tube here. This is the iron ingot plus the pneumatic tube. And what it does is uh, with these smart tubes, it, 
it will try to put inventory or it'll, it'll try to put items in the closest inventory that will allow it. So by putting a restriction tube on this chest, it says that this chest is 5,000 uh, units away. And so it'll try to put things in here last. Now, we need to extract items from these apiaries. So let's, whoops, let's get some of these retrievers on here. And these retrievers need to be uh, powered. So let's get some blue alloy wire, a battery box, and let's start getting some power in here with these solar panels. The solar panels uh, automatically connect to the blue alloy wire and we'll start charging the retrievers as well as the battery box. Uh, it takes a while for them to get going, but once they are uh, set, it, you don't have to worry about them. It'll, it'll run off of the internal stored power as well as the battery power. And the awesome thing about it is power going into one side of these retrievers and any of the blocks that use them uh, can be pulled just by connecting more blue alloy wire to the other side to something else. So you can see this is already getting power. Now we need to use a redstone signal in order to tell these retrievers to pull items out. So by simply running power across the top, it will, once there's sufficient blue electric power, it will pull the items out of the out, output slot based on what we tell it to retrieve. This one, and you can see I have it running up along the top is going to be retrieving princesses. This one, which runs down all the way under the bottom, will be retrieving the drones. And this one here will be retrieving honeycomb. And you have to tell it uh, which items to uh, pull out based on the types of bees that you're using. Speaking of bees, the way these work is you put in some drones or you put in a drone and a princess and it automatically takes the princess and one of the drones and makes a queen. See how it used one of the drones here. And I'll go ahead and populate all four of these guys here. And I'll make it morning. Now, these apiaries do require, or the bees do require certain criteria in order to work. These need flowers nearby, so I'll put a flower there and uh, one there. Uh, all three of these are touching this one, so they'll automatically start uh, producing honey and, and starting their bee cycle, as well as this one here. Now, Using these pneumatic tubes, the output is from the side. It will pull everything from here out the side. The input, princesses have to be fed in through the top and drones have to be fed in through the bottom because if anything that's fed in through the bottom will go here and the drones have to go here and vice versa. Uh, using the pneumatic tubes, it is possible to accidentally put the wrong thing in the wrong spot. If you try to feed one of these in through the side, it will actually enter the output. And I got very confused after having lost a, a bee somehow. I couldn't figure out where it went. And then I went through all of these and found it in the output. And it was, uh, it, it helped me to design uh, to design this a little bit better and discovered that the uh, apiaries have specific input sides using these. Now there is something called um, apiarist pipe or apiary pipe that uh, you can use to more in a more detailed fashion uh, configure it but that uses uh, the build craft pipes as opposed to the industrial craft. I think this is industrial craft 
uh, or, or red power maybe. Uh, I'll have to look that up. But uh, they are two different kinds of pipes, and they, they treat the inventories of the things they're connected to differently. Uh, so these are specifically side-oriented, and the advantage to them is they will not try to overfill something. So once this is full of drones, it will go on to the next possible inventory, and anything else that is left over will get put in here. So once you have this setup going, and you can see these bees going, um, it it just runs by itself. It'll automatically fill everything up. Any honeycomb that's produced will get slurped into this, and that's pretty much the gist of it. Now, over here, I have the one from the beginning of the video, and it's been running for a while. I've already got a lot of honeycomb, but no bees. The reason for that is uh, I didn't have a full quantity of bees. This one's already full, and so it's starting to refill the next one. But these, I had to uh, basically split two stacks of bees in uh, to fill the rest of them up. Once these 17 here empty out, the output will start refilling from the front to the back. Now, the awesome thing about this is you can make this as long or as short as you want. If I wanted to, I could have this line stretching all the way out to the edge of the chunk range, and as long as I or a chunk loader are present, it will just keep going. Now, the, the application that I'm using this for, uh, and I'll be going over this in one of my next videos, is cross-pollination, but uh, to show you why this is important is the trees, in order to cross-pollinate, need to have bees all the time. Uh, instead of having to come back here and manually refill all the bees every single time, uh, because once a queen dies, she spits out drones and princesses, and then they have to be put back in here in order to make the next queen. So this automatically feeds everything in, and keeps the uh, queens generating all the time. So you can basically set these up and walk away, go build something or, or explore. And as long as these are in active chunks, they will keep doing their business. And I have several of them set up here with different kinds of trees. And this is going to be used in my uh, uh, episodes talking about the tree crossbreeding but for the purposes of this, so you can get a better look at this and also see that it isn't just the marbled bees. And this I'm using the meadows bees, and they work just fine. Um, so you can see how this works. I'm going to include this with this map as a download, and I'll have a link for that in the uh, description uh, for this video. But... That is the long and short of this contraption here. I I guess I can call it an automatic bee producer or, or something. I don't know. But uh, it's going to be coming into play in a lot of my future videos. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And uh, thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions or questions, leave them in the comments section, and I will do my best to answer them. Um, if you like this video, give it a like, and also, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. I've got a lot more coming for you. Uh, but in the meantime, this is Thorn of Night, and I will talk to you later.